Good evening, friends. Uh, I'm Saket Pansal, and I welcome you all to a very special uh, in, uh, discussion related to certified Scrum trainer. I keep meeting a lot of aspirant trainers, and I usually get this question: How one can become certified Scrum trainer? And I end up replying that I have heard a few things which I can share, but since I have not traveled the journey myself, I can't uh, uh, can't give an authentic answer to it. And fortunately, today we have Peter with us, and he is a certified Scrum trainer, and uh, he himself runs a mentoring program for aspiring CST. And in this session, he will help us in knowing how to become a certified Scrum trainer, what it takes, what are the challenges, and what is the path. So session is designed in a in a way that we have a one hour time. So. Peter will take us through some prepared presentations because there are some thoughts which are already there in his hand. So we will we will just hear the default process from him, and in between you may get some questions which you keep typing typing in a chat box. So all of you can see in the bottom of your interface there is something called chat. So you keep pushing your questions there as you get, and in between I will compile them. So whenever Peter take a pause, I will compile those questions and ask. Some of those relevant questions to 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 Peter, and uh, that is how uh, it looks like. So, I transfer the, the the command to to Peter, so he can take us through the certified Scrum trainer path. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Saket, and thank you for the opportunity to come uh, chat with um, um, your folks, your colleagues at uh, Discussing Agile. It's quite an honor to be here. Um, just before we get started, can you give me a wave if you can hear me? Okay, so, okay, everyone else is muted, so I guess uh, I guess we're okay. So what I'm gonna do is, ah, thank you, Prabhat. So I think what I'm going to do is turn on the, um, turn on the screen sharing, because I prepared a little presentation. Okay, and so at this point, um, you should now see, um, uh, you should now see the title of the title slide. Uh, the CST Voyage and Mentoring. Uh, I want to talk about uh, how I became a CST, uh, talk about the process of what it means to become a CST, and um, maybe have a little conversation at the end uh, if I, how I can help you. So, a um, couple words about myself. Uh, as Saket pointed out, I am a, uh, I'm a certified Scrum trainer. I have been doing trainings since, hmm, let's see, uh, I think I started doing Scrum trainings in 2007 or 2006, if you count internal trainings. Um, I had my first public training, and um, back in 2007 it was, um, I co-trained my first uh, certified Scrum Master class, I think it was in 2008 or two, December 2008. Um, I didn't become a certified Scrum trainer, however, until 2012, and that was kind of a long story, which I'll tell you a little bit more now. Um, most of what I do these days is, um, um, you know, is scrum training. I'm active in Portugal. I'm active in Switzerland. Occasionally, I go to uh, I go to Italy, and um, let's put it this way: there, there's even some talk of coming to India uh, around December this year. Uh, my other project is a thing called uh, personal agility. Uh, personal agility is taking um, taking the ideas of agility and applying it to your life. So the idea is to do more that matters. Uh, it turns out that this is also a great way to have more impact at work and enable companies to um, actually get things done, which I've discovered is a challenge for many organizations. So, um, what I'd like to do is, and this is some stuff that you can uh, that you can do in the chat room. Um, if you're an agile coach or trainer, okay, certified or not, this is about what you do. Uh, not necessarily about what your job title is, but if you're doing agile or coaching and training, could you put a message in the chat room now saying, I'm an agile coach or trainer? Okay, and I'm not seeing anything at all in the chat, so this is a friendly reminder to wake up. This is going to be an active uh, an interactive workshop, which means you're going to get to do things and talk to each other. Okay, so now people, uh, now things are starting to, uh, to roll in. Uh, I see scrum masters, I see agile coaches, I see trainers. Okay, so keep it coming, keep it coming. Now, how many of you have taught a certified scrum master-like class? Okay, now CSM class, that means a two-day format. 
uh, with the learning objectives more or less uh, as they're defined by the Scrum Alliance. Okay, I understand we're having problems with the sound. Okay, um, while people are giving their answers. So you are audible here, uh, Peter, to me. Okay, am I sounding good to you? Okay, excellent, yeah. okay. And I'm seeing a couple of people out there have actually done some training, awesome. So that means you're gonna have some good questions. Has anyone done a co-training with a CST that has actually taught an official CSM class? Okay, going once, going twice. Okay, okay, excellent, awesome. So let's, uh, are there any CSTs in the room? Is there anyone else here a CST? I'm not expecting any, but you know, I could be wrong. Okay, so um, let's move on. Um, what I'd like to do is uh, I'd like to explore the challenges of becoming a CST. Now I noticed that a lot of you, uh, you have already had some, um, you know, you've already had some training experience. So what we're gonna do is we've got 25 people in the room now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, split you off into groups of five people and then give you five minutes to, discover, to discuss the challenges of you know, what's, what's the challenge of becoming a CST. Now obviously I have some answers to that question as well, but what I'd really like to do is hear it from your perspective first. So what's gonna happen is first thing you should do is designate a speaker for the group because I'm gonna ask two or three of the groups afterwards to um, you know, share their key findings, okay? Now, the way you'll notice this is with, four, with one minute to go, you'll get a warning saying the group is about to, to split up. Um, okay, so everybody ready? So you know, when, when you split into the group, you'll get assigned to a room. Um, you know, take a moment to introduce yourself and then just go around the room and say, what do you see as the challenges of being a CST, uh, of becoming a CST? And when you get to the end of the five minutes, make sure that you've, you've designated a speaker so that when I ask, what do you see the challenges, you can just jump in with the answers. So I'm going to create, uh, I hope I'm going to create the breakout rooms now. Yes, breakout rooms. And we are going to assign the 27 people into five rooms. Um, so with that, I wish you great conversations. Don't be shy. And um, we'll come back together in five minutes. And I may pop in in a minute in the rooms to see how you're doing. So three, two, one, creating the breakout rooms. So maybe let us start the discussion about what are the key challenges in becoming CST, so any thoughts? I, I think the first thing, uh, first thing that uh, challenge that comes is like, uh, because I think all of the people in this uh, room are CSM, right? So, right, and the prerequisite for becoming a CST is like you have to uh, coach or train a class of uh, people who are going through CSM programs, right? So basically, yeah. so so if that is that is the roadmap, like you have to train people in Scrum for getting mm -hmm. them CSM. So the challenges would be to getting a forum where you get it get it because mm -hmm. this is a kind of like branch out from being from a csm to a cst so who will give you that opportunity first challenge is who can provide a csm the opportunity to be a, C, a cst and what are the prerequisites for the uh, for getting that uh, role right? so mm -hmm. uh, i yeah, i don't yeah. have i have i don't have idea about uh, how we uh, branch out from a CSM to a CST uh, route. So like whom to approach, what are the uh, steps required to be that? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so this is Atulia. I have a, a different opinion on that one. Uh, I'm uh, is, uh, working as a system master since uh, plus years. I'm a CSM, CSP, CSD. So uh, in, in my context, what I think, uh, 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 major challenge is that that uh, you get some mentor i mean a cst in indian context to be specific uh, it's very hard to uh, get a mentor uh, uh, who is a cst mm -hmm. and even if you get uh, a cst as a mentor uh, probably you will not get an opportunity to co train a csm class with the 
Hey guys, uh, we have 53 seconds left, and this is Avinash, by the way. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes, Avinash, we can hear okay. you. Perfect. So, from my side, I would say uh, CST is a long journey. Uh, and probably from my perspective, I would say we, we have to be a little patient, and I understand what we are saying that. The challenge that I have faced, I agree with Atulia that uh, it's very hard to find a CST uh, as a mentor. But you know what, you have to go and look for one and there are so many CSTs which will definitely help you. And me personally have find it very challenging and fortunately I found few and they are helping me. Um, and the other challenge is writing an abstract, submit to conferences and then getting it selected. Once it gets selected. Okay, so it looks like pretty much everyone is back. <coughs> um, what I'd like to... Um, what I'd like to do is ask the speakers for, for each group. I believe there were five groups. Um, so let's do groups one, three, and five. So if you were the speaker for one of those groups, what I'd like you to ask you to do is, if possible, turn on your video so we can see you. Um, and then, um, you know, unmute yourself uh, so that we can, um, you know, so that we can hear what, uh, what happened in your group. So I'm looking for an unmuted person. So. Uh, Ramanathan, am I pronouncing your name correctly? I'm going to unmute you. What did you What did you discuss in your group? Uh, we see uh, the challenges uh, that that has been there, and like uh, what are all the uh, agile concepts and practice. Uh, probably Rajesh was the one who was leading the session. We happy with that he can put forth all the uh, the points to this. Okay, I can't hear you very well. Is it? One second. Uh, if anyone else has unmuted themselves, please keep yourself muted because we get distortion and that makes it difficult to understand. And having a, using a um, microphone is helpful as well. So, you want to try again? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Peter. We have uh, like we have uh, most of the CSM who have been joined in our group. Uh, we we felt that like uh, how is like to uh, find an opportunity and then get co trained together. That was the uh, option that we are looking for. How well we can go and co get co trained by a CST who's already uh, been uh, having up a list of sessions uh, with the community and how come we can learn from them and what are all the opportunities that are available where we can learn from multiple CSPs to understand their different approaches of learning. Okay, so one of the challenges is um, getting a CST who's willing to co-train with you. Is that, am I hearing yeah. you correctly? Yes. Yes. Okay, okay. So I see Pramod is uh, next in line. Uh, what, would you, what would you add to that? You'll need to unmute yourself before you tar start speaking. Yes, uh, the same point that I would like to mention again, for finding a co-trainer or certified one, and also gaining experience in Scrum methodology. So, the one point, when you have a down the line two or three ex years of experience as in Scrum in the real time, and then uh, that's a challenging part, and then finding a co-trainer also. Okay. Um, next, I believe, is Ramesh. Go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Uh, in my group, we discussed about what are the prerequisites uh, to co-train uh, with the CST. How we will get the opportunity to co-train with the CST? Whom to reach out? Uh, for okay. example, if you have met the prerequisites of uh, um, co-training with the CST, after completing the prerequisites, whom to reach out so that we can get a chance to train with the CST so mm -hmm. these are the topics we discussed in our group okay so what are the what are the prerequisites how do you reach out to to a CST okay well thank you very much what I'd like to do now is I'll, I'll show you my list uh, I think you'll see some similarities with yours so let me jump back into the PowerPoint here okay so you know I think one of the key issues is that when you want to become a scrum trainer, the bar is very high. Um, a lot of people think, oh, I'm a trainer, you know, I can learn about scrum and then I can become a CST. Uh, you actually need to be a, a senior member of the community. <clears throat> uh, becoming a CST is not a, 
not so much a license to learn how to be a trainer, but it's a recognition that you already are a very good trainer. <coughs> now, you'll notice I've, I've written, you need recommendations from other CSTs. Theoretically, it's possible to get around that requirement, um, you know, especially if you're coming from an area that doesn't have a lot of CSTs to, with whom to co-train. Um, but the, it's, it's much easier uh, if, you, if you do have recommendations, especially having a relationship with CSTs who can, you know, or who can open doors for you and kind of help you get access to the, to the Scrum Alliance. Um, you know, it can, as you've pointed out, it can be difficult to find co-trainers and it can also be difficult to find mentors. So I think, you know, this is kind of the statement of the problem and what I've heard from you guys uh, confirmed it pretty much. Uh, <coughs> so what I'd like to do is over the course of the next, four, you know, 35, 40 minutes, I'd like to uh, share my story, uh, talk about the requirements of becoming a CST, and then talk about how to find a mentor. Um, how and why I became a CST. Okay, so what I'm... I'm not going to reread the bullet points here. Uh, these are kind of the main points that I'd like to talk about. Um, so what I'd like to do is start with this first issue. Um, <coughs> so what happened? I, um, I started doing Scrum, I guess it was at about 2000, 2006. Um, yes, I am sharing the screen, and yes, you should be able to see it. Uh, I started as a Scrum trainer in 2006. Uh, I, I read this book from Ken Schraber, uh, Agile Project Management with Scrum, and uh, this was like a great aha moment for me. Finally, you know, I'd been involved in IT uh, all of my career, and when I read this, it was finally, finally a way um, of organizing people that actually make sense. Um, now, back then, you couldn't really just go to a CSM class, and I live in Switzerland. Uh, there hadn't been a CSM class in Switzerland. In fact, I'm not even sure the concept had been in Invented yet, um, you know. So I was largely self-taught, uh, but it also meant that when I wanted to do Scrum with my teams, I had to go out or with my team, I had to teach them how to do Scrum as well. And my company at the time, my employer, was encouraging, um, you know, their their senior consultants and project leaders to be thought leaders. Um, so one of the first things that I did was I, I held a workshop at the local uh, open system user group, um, one day workshop on Scrum had 24 people in attendance. And that was really a cool thing. I wasn't a very good trainer back then, and I totally blew the time. It was supposed to be, I don't know, six hours, and we did eight hours, but people stayed all the way to the end. Um, after, that, after that workshop, um, I, got a, I got an email from one of the participants, and he said, your workshop changed the direction of my career. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. And that was, I guess, in, in March of, of 2006 and, and, or 2007. And by the end of 2007, it was becoming clear that my employer and my future didn't, and, and my um, employer and I did not have a common future together. Uh, so I was thinking about what I wanted to do, and that email started kind of buzzing in my ear. And I realized, hey, wait a minute, I did something really important for that guy. And you know, a couple of other people had had similar experiences. And I thought, yeah, this is, this is what I want to do. Um, so that was really the moment when I decided I wanted to be uh, a trainer and help people discover Scrum. So, <clears throat> how do you, um, you know, how, how how do you become a trainer? Well, you've got to organize co-trainings, and so I guess the first thing that I did was through my employer. Um, I invited Boris Gloker to come to Switzerland, and he actually gave what I think was the first uh, CSM course in Switzerland at that time. Um, sometime later, I asked him if he would be interested in, in mentoring me, uh, and he said he didn't have time. I, I had gone to the German Scrum Users Group meeting, and he said he didn't have time to do it, but his colleague, Andreas Schlieb, uh, who had just become certified as a, as a CST, he had time. And so I met Andreas, and we talked a bit, and we decided uh, to hold... Um, the, um, well, my first, probably the second or third certified Scrum Master class in Switzerland. And we had, I don't know, 27 people who came. It was a great success, and we decided to continue our collaboration. Um, at that point, I was quite active in the Swiss, um, or I had founded uh, what became the Lean Agile Scrum Group in the Swiss ICT, the, the leading IT organization in Switzerland. Um, we hosted a conference. 
I convinced Ken Schraber to come uh, to be a keynote speaker. Uh, the way I convinced him was I said, let's do a CSM class together. And he said, oh, sure, wonderful. I'll be happy to come. Just guarantee me 25,000 euros. And I turned rather pale at that. Even by Swiss standards, that's a lot of money. Um, but I signed on the dotted line, and, and he came. And I was fortunate that I got enough people to come that I was actually able to uh, more than break even on the class. He came, gave the conference, uh, and that kind of set me on my way. And in fact, when I think of the co-trainings I did, I did them with uh, Andreas Schleep, uh, Peter Hundemark. Uh, Andreas and I did a lot of business together. You know, he came to Switzerland on, on quite a regular basis for public and private classes. Uh, Peter Hundemark from South Africa, we did a home and home exchange. Um, you know, where I went to South Africa, gave a course there. Uh, he and I did a training together in Zurich. Um, Ken Schraber, I imported for an outrageous amount of money. Uh, Jeff Sutherland, on the other hand, he was great. I, I contacted him. He was coming to Switzerland to do a class. Um, and he, um, he said, oh, you've already co-trained with Ken? Okay, sure, come on down. And so I got to do a one-hour co-training with him, and, and that was enough to get the recommendation. Life was simpler back then. Uh, so let's see. The um, ah yes, um, what perhaps is interesting is is how the co-training went with Ken. When I told him I wanted to co-train, uh, what he asked me to do was to write a three-page essay on the importance, you know, and of, or every you know, a three-page essay on the Daily Scrum. And my God, I combed the internet, I researched it, I got the traditional approach, I got the modern approach, I got the alternative approach, I got the Y approach. I gave him this paper. I mailed it into him, I don't know, a week or so before the course, um, you know, and when he, um, uh, when I met with him, he said to me, well, it's clear that you get it, you know, I'll, I'll give you a lesson, I want you to do this lesson, which you can prepare for, and then I'm going to give you something of a surprise on the second day, and I managed to muddle through it, and it was okay. So, um, that was kind of, the, that was the high point of my Scrum career, or the, with, with the Scrum Alliance at one level, because um, by the time I did the co-training with Ken Schraber, I think that was July of 2009. I'm a little fuzzy on the dates here, but I think that's what it was. Um, there were, however, uh, the, the Scrum Alliance was having a lot of problems back then. Um, in fact, I think it's, you, you still feel, the, the, uh, to some extent, the after effects of that even today. Um, and in October of 2009, uh, the Scrum Alliance left Ken Schraber. Irreconcilable differences between Ken and, and the board. And Ken ended up resigning and went off to form scrum.org. Um, and at the Munich gathering that fall, 22 out of 24 uh, CST applicants were turned down. Uh, I was one of them. And this, this kind of brought in a very long, very unpleasant process. They tried to come up, basically, up until Ken left, the way you got to be a, uh, a CST was you became a, you know, Ken would bless you or knight you and say, you know, I, I appoint thee, I appoint thee, I appoint thee, and then you were a scrum trainer. Um, some of the scrum trainers there were very good. Some of them were not so good. Uh, the process wasn't scalable, and of course, it totally fell apart when Ken left. And so I was a guinea pig for their first attempt at um, coming up with a new process, which became a disaster. And uh, so I didn't, so I got turned down. Uh, so that was my, uh, then I appealed. My appeal got turned down. Um, in the meantime, I'd had, um, uh, I'd had, I invited, Henry Kinneberg was in town. So I invited him for dinner and we were talking about it. And he said he was turned down, you know, he said, if I get, I've applied twice. He got turned down twice. He applied a third time. And, you know, kind of said, well, if I don't get through on the third time, I'm not going to do it. I'll just, you know, move on and do something else. And I got turned down on the third time, and I said, you know, so well, I went on and did something else and spent a lot of time working with Steve Denning. Um, what actually convinced me uh, to stay with the Scrum Alliance was, um, I guess it was two years later, um, there was, uh, I was in the U.S. Um, on uh, kind of an extended sabbatical, and I went to the Scrum Gathering in Atlanta. I want to say this was the fall of, uh, this must have been the spring of 2012. And the thing about the Scrum Alliance, the, the, the Scrum, well, Scrum people in general, and the trainers in particular, they're wonderful people. They're interesting. They're dynamic. You can have great conversations with them. And I thought, well, whatever I think about the bureaucracy and the, the, the trials and tribulations that the Scrum Alliance is going through, you know, this is, this is an active community. Uh, this is where I want to be. And so I reached out to the, uh, to the new managing director, 
and she said, this is your fourth try? And I said, yeah, well, okay. And so she had a, she had a conversation with the TAC, and um, it, went much, it went much easier that time around. And so I did, by coincidence, I'm not sure if this was strictly kosher, but it happened anyway. Uh, one of the TAC members had already seen me in action at, at a uh, uh, training in, in Seattle, and so he knew that I could train. So I was able to do the actual trainer acceptance um, remotely. Um, what was, I, I think what I remember most clearly is they basically went through my slides. You know, my, my, I was using a slide deck at the time. They went through that with a fine tooth comb. And that was, um, uh, you know, so I, I basically decided whatever they ask for, I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say, oh, that's very interesting. And then I'll, let me make the change to that. And then I, then I made the change to the slides and they were happy. And so they approved me. Um, <coughs> the TAC, the trainer acceptance, actually, sorry, this is wrong. It's trainer acceptance community is the proper name for it. And um, the, 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 the TAC has had its ups and downs. There have been times when the process was very political, especially right after uh, uh, Ken left the Scrum Alliance. Um, today, my belief is the, uh, the trainer acceptance community is good people trying to do a good job. Um, every once in a while, strange things happen. Um, two people who I've, um, who I've co-trained with and, and recommended, I thought they would both be shoe-ins and they, they both had to appear in front of the TAC twice. Uh, one of them was Joe Justice, who was, well, anyway. Um, so the, you know, they are human beings. They're trying to do a good job. Every once in a while, humanity strikes. But um, you know, once upon a time, you know, you're kind of worried about politics being the dominant, uh, dominant characteristic in how the TAC works. Uh, today, I don't believe that's the case. I, I think the TAC is um, hard. We can have a conversation as to whether they're too hard, but I do believe that they are mostly fair. So the interesting question is now, what happens after you become a CST? Now, once upon a time, I thought, ah, becoming a certified scrum trainer, this is the gravy train. I'm going to have you know, full classes and, and high rates, and, and life is going to be good. Um, the, it turns out when you become a CST, um, at one level, nothing really happens at all. Um, it's just a, it's a permission to play the game. You still have to, there still needs to be a business, uh, whether it's your business or someone else's business is, a, is another question but you still need to be able to fill a class. People have to want to see you. Now, whether you're more of a marketing-driven organization or more of a reputation-driven organization, that's kind of up to you. Um, but it does open a huge number of doors. And for me, I, I consider myself very lucky to have been a CST. Um, the, I, I've been able to travel the world. Um, I've been as far north as uh, St. Petersburg. I've been to South Africa. I've been to India. I've been to Vietnam. Um, I've been all over Europe. It's, it's really been a very exciting time, and I've learned a lot of things. And so I, I think that that is, if I had to say, what is the single most benefit of becoming a CST? Um, certainly that's been it. In terms of my ability to earn a living, um, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't believe that I, would earn, that I earn more money as a CST than I would as a coach. You know, if you're a good coach, um, you know, there's, 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 money to be, there's money to be earned, especially if you can make it to Europe or to the, to the U.S. Um, the being a CST, your daily rate looks very high, but you spend a lot of you have a lot of non revenue time, especially if you're you're running your own business. So it's um, you know it's a good living, but at least at least for me, it's it's not the um, uh, I I wouldn't call it life in the golden um, um, you know in a golden carriage or anything like that. So that's pretty much my story. Um, I think what I'd like to do is maybe take a break here and see if there are any questions. Um, and the next thing is, before I go on to the next thing, which is the actual requirements for becoming a CST. Um, so if you've got a question, uh, I would say let's put it in the chat now. This would be the time to do it. And if not, then we'll move on. Okay. By the way, in general with questions, um, if you have questions, write it down in the chat as soon as you think of it. Uh, and that way, if, uh, you know, because I take a break from time to time to ask for questions, and then we're good to go. So I'm going to count down. Siddharth, are you, you've got your, no, I take it back. If you want to ask a question, turn on your video. Going once. Going twice. Ah, yes, yeah, Siddharth. So let me unmute you. What would you like to ask? 
Yes, uh, I don't have any questions. I just want to listen what's ah, going on. Ah, no, okay. Not really into IT, so thank you. Okay, great, no problem. So, um, in that case, I will go back to screen share mode. And so what I'd like to do is talk about the formal requirements for the perspective of the Scrum Alliance. Um, so there's the, the, the formal requirements and there's the expectations from the trainer acceptance community, which are almost but not quite the same thing. Uh, and then give you some thoughts about what you need in order to co-train with someone. Okay, so <coughs> um, if you want to become a Scrum trainer, the most important line is that web page at the bottom uh, Scrum Alliance certifications, trainers, CST certification, and that's where you find everything you need to know about the certification process. Okay, and so what I've done here on the slide is I've basically quoted the most essential points. Um, first and foremost, they want you to have a deep knowledge and understanding of Scrum. Okay, it's, it's not sufficient just to have read a book. You need you know, years of experience, uh, they generally want to see, and this is what the TAC wants, they generally want to see you with experience in all three roles. Okay, you need to be a certified Scrum professional. Um, you need to have actually taught Scrum. Okay, um, you can either, you can do it in a partnership with the CST. The expectation is when you're co-training for it to count, you must have done at least 50% of the class. Uh, so it's more your class than the CST's class. Uh, or you've done it independently in a non-certified context. Okay, and we talk about this minimum of 100 students and a minimum of 10 classes. Okay, if you want to train CSPO courses, you also have to have a CSPO. And finally, they have a non-competition clause. So if you are a trainer for any of a number of organizations that have Scrum in their name, um, this, I believe, also now includes uh, the scale that, I'm not sure about the scaled agile framework, but certainly Scrum Study and Scrum.org are, are a bit of a problem here. Um, good. Um, the application process is fairly straightforward. Uh, they have an application where you submit all the documentation. Uh, one of the things that you need to do with this, by the way, is make it easy for the TAC to confirm that, um, you know, that you've actually satisfied the requirements, okay? And they've, they've, they've got some guidance and help for you, for you on doing that. There's another link down here. Uh, this is a Word file. Take a look at the Word file, and that, and that gives you some very useful tips. So there is a fee for this. It's $250. Uh, I don't know if they have special conditions for India. They might. Uh, they generally give a lower fee for the basic CSM. Uh, I don't know if they do that for, for Indian CST candidates or not. Um, in any case, what happens is the Scrum Alliance staff, that is the, the employees of the Scrum Alliance, they do a first screening to kind of make sure the application is complete. Um, then they pass it on to the TAC, uh, which reviews your application, okay? And basically, uh, at this point, one of two things can happen. Um, either it's approved, in which case you get an invitation to go to, it's funny, I learned, I learned this name today when I was doing the research, they called this the Interview and Certification Panel. Uh, <coughs> you know, this is basically the oral exam. Uh, you go in front of the TAC and convince them that you, that you can teach Scrum and that you can deal with a little bit of stress in the class. Uh, or they deny it. Uh, if they deny it, they'll give you some advice on what you need to, uh, to uh, in order to su success uh, successfully resubmit. Uh, there is, however, a six-month waiting period before resubmission. Okay, now assuming you get through, then you get invited to, um, you know, well, everyone I know calls this going in front of the TAC, even though they've got this other, this name for the panel, but this is the oral exam. Um, the, they hold them concurrently with the global scrum gatherings. They've been expanding that to include regional, regional, regional scrum gatherings or other major conferences. So like at Agile 2017, uh, I'm pretty sure they had a TAC. Um, at this point, if you get through, um, you know, you pay the fee. Uh, I believe it's $3,500 at the moment. Um, there's, there's an agreement to sign, and once you've done that, you're a CST. Um, if you're denied, again, they give you feedback, and there's a six-month waiting period. Now, there is, there, I, I'm gonna say there used to be, because I did see it on the webpage, I, I discovered that this morning, that the concept of provisional CST is, is, no, is not on the homepage. I don't know if they've eliminated this, uh, or if this is just an error in the page. Um, but it used to be there was kind of a, well, 
you're kind of sort of almost good enough, but we're not really sure. So what we're going to do is we're going to put you on probation. And then you have to do a certain number of courses and get positive feedback <coughs> uh, during the probation time. Okay, and then if you pass the probation, then you get upgraded to a, to a full CST. Um, as I say, I'm not certain if the provisional CST thing is still active. I thought it was. I hadn't heard that it was canceled, but I didn't find it on the web page. So that's the formal part. What about the informal part? Well, I was at the, um, the Scrum Gathering in Phoenix. This is about a year and a half ago. Uh, they did a workshop for, um, you know, for aspiring CSTs. And I was just listening to the questions and I was listening to the answers coming from the TAC. And I'm not sure if, how well you can see this drawing. I kind of did a pencil sketch and I'm not really a great, um, you know, I don't really claim to be a great, great artist, but here it is. Um, what the aspirants were looking for is they wanted something like a product backlog. You know, 15 items and they check the boxes and when the boxes are checked, they're over the bar and they're in. And what the TAC is looking for are people who are great trainers, who are going to be great ambassadors to Scrum. Um, the expression is they want you to fly over the bar. They don't want you to just barely meet the requirements. They want it to be clear that you're already a great trainer, a world-class trainer. Um, so, you know, this is, what, um, this is what you need to demonstrate to the Scrum Alliance. Oh, sorry, to the TAC. Okay, so what I'd like to do is, is talk to you about what, what is the challenge? What do, what do you have to offer in order to be an attractive, um, you know, an attractive candidate for co-training? And so the first thing I did is I said, well, what are the reasons that a CST would have for not wanting to let you into his, his class or her class? Um, so, first of all, very often it has to do with how the CSTs market themselves. Um, some people, you know, they market a product, some people market themselves. I'm, I'm in the group of, of people who tend to market myself. Um, sometimes they're offering agile transitions, but, you know, the idea is, as a CST, you're developing a reputation. And <coughs> so it's not just that you're selling a CSM class. Um, so, you know, if they're selling themselves and their reputation, it's kind of hard for them to put someone else in their, pla in their place. Um, and I've actually discovered this myself. If you sell a, CS you know, a CSM class advertising a particular CST as the trainer, and then someone else comes up and does most of the training, well, we call that bait and switch, and that doesn't go over very well. Um, I actually tried that once in India and it went quite badly. And so I kind of, I, I learned my lesson on that one, not to do that again. Um, on the other hand, if you don't have a reputation, if you don't have something to offer, what can, you know, why should the, why, why should a participant want to come to your class? So from the perspective of the organization that's selling the class, selling you is difficult. Um, you know, and this is the whole thing about, you know, risk to their reputation. Are you really ready to fly the airplane? Now, as, as you get more experience, you know, if you've got three or four, co you know, recommendations from three or four CSTs already behind you, you know, and you just need the last two, well, that's a much easier situation than if you're trying to get that first, uh, that first recommendation. So let's, uh, let's look at it from the other perspective. Why might a CST choose to co-train with you? Well, the goodness of their heart, you know, so, you know that does in fact happen. Um, you know, sometimes they have an interest in, in your region. They actually want to come and visit you. Um, you know, so you, you kind of become an excuse to travel there. Um, this is a variation on the idea of, well, they like you and they like working with you. Sometimes, you know, people will do it just for fun. Um, what I have found easiest is, especially if I'm going to organize your class, if you have something special to offer, um, well, first of all, I have an interest in what you're doing, um, and that might be shared by some of my participants. So, for instance, one of the co-trainings I did in Zurich, in fact, the only one I've done up till now where I really shared the stage was with Joe Justice. Why? Because Joe was doing a Scrum for Hardware, and that was something really special that you could almost only get from Joe. Um, and the other, re the other reason why a CST might want to co-train with you is you have a business case. You've got a class full of people. It's going to bring money. 
Uh, you get some money, he gets some money, or she gets some money, and you're both happy. And when I think back to the co-trainings, you know, where I was the, 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 the you know, uh, where I was not the CST, all of them revolved around this case. Okay, so, you know, as a CST, you're not just a scrum trainer, you're also a businessman. So what I'd like to do now is, uh, before we go on to the topic of finding a mentor, what I'd like to do is check the chat and see if we have any questions uh, before moving on. So if you become a, a CST and then a safe SPC, then will my CST, uh, da, 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 da. Hmm. Um, you know, scale, scaled Agile Inc. and the Scrum Alliance don't get along with each other very now, and so I'm pretty sure you're not allowed to do that. You gotta pick one or the other. Uh, I could be wrong on this, um, you know, please, uh, the thing to do here, you know, if you've got a question about how things work, um, the source of all information is support at scrumalliance.org, okay, and I put that email address. And so if you're not sure, uh, send, them in, send them an email. Uh, CST and PST, no. Uh, scr again, scrum.org, you know, Ken Schraber and the Scrum Alliance, they, they, they had kind of a messy divorce and, and, well, they've managed to come back together enough that there's, there's one Scrum guide, so, you know, they're, they're no longer holding the kids hostage to each other. Um, but, <coughs> the, um, uh, you know, th these are uh, rival organizations. Well, let me, um, what does a TAC look for? Um, one of the things that the TAC looks for is that you're teaching Scrum and that the Scrum that you're teaching has got to be very, very close to the way it is in the Scrum Guide. Some people, you know, really treat the Scrum Guide as the Bible. Other people are, take it a little bit more loosely as kind of a, well, this is where we start. Um, but the idea with certified training, you've got learning objectives that uh, are focused on the Scrum Guide. Uh, so I think that's the most the most important thing that what you you know you teach scrum and then you're very clear about what is scrum and what's not scrum you know so things that people get tripped up on story points is not part of scrum estimating is not part of scrum the only thing that scrum says about estimating is that the team does it uh, it doesn't say how you do it you know so you know you've got to make sure that um, um, you know, you've got to make sure that what you're teaching is aligned with Scrum. If you're teaching stuff that's not Scrum, uh, you've got to keep that to an absolute minimum. Uh, sorry, you, no, well, I would, no, sorry. Keeping it to an absolute minimum is my suggestion um, because the more stuff you have in your, in your materials that aren't Scrum, the more opportunity you give the TAC to ask uh, unpleasant questions. Um, so I would encourage you to keep it to a minimum, and if you do put stuff in there that's not Scrum, you've got to mark it clearly as such. Um, the last thing that they're looking for, I think, is poise under fire. The TAC is a high-stress environment. Uh, being in front of 30 students is a high-stress environment as well. Uh, they want to see that you can handle the stress. Okay, so what I'd like to do then is go on to uh, what does a mentor do? Well, let's see if I can get this to scroll here. There we are. Okay. Um, <coughs> you know, one of, the, one of the things that's often a bit of a source of confusion is the, um, the difference between a coach and a mentor. And a coach, a proper coach, doesn't necessarily know anything about the subject matter that, that you're being coached on. A coach can, can coach anybody because all they're doing is, is ask, well, quote, all they're doing is asking questions and the knowledge comes from the coachee. Now, the problem, and, and this is actually something, you know, if you're thinking of talking to a, to a possible coach or a co possible mentor, I'd really talk to them about their strategy. Now, what I've got here is my understanding of what a mentor does. Uh, you know, first and foremost, a mentor has been there before. So like if you are a, um, you know, if, if, if you're in a startup and you want to get uh, venture capital, it might be helpful to have someone on your board who's gone through the process of getting venture capital before. Um, you know, and so the idea is the mentor actually has expertise which they're willing to share. Um, now the mentor does do coaching. Uh, you know, there is this whole hold up the mirror type thing. But again, they're sharing, uh, they're sharing information. Uh, I think one of the things about a mentor, though, is that the mentor should leave decision-making up to you. 
um, you know, you're the one who's making the, uh, the application. Uh, where a mentor can really help you is making introductions. You know, so like when you're wandering around the gathering, it's, instead of being a, um, you know, just one of a thousand random participants, you know, you get introduced to other CSTs and that kind of helps you get started. And for me, what I consider to be the most important is that, you know, as a mentor, um, I need to have your best interest at heart. Okay, I'm, you know, the reason I'm doing this is so that you can become uh, a good scrum trainer. Now, why is it hard to find a mentor? Um, well, all those reasons why a CST might be hesitant, they apply to the mentorship relationship. Uh, what I would add on top of this, which I haven't written here, is the mentor may also become a competitor of the CST, which is a little bit weird. Um, you know, most of my mentees are people who are not interested in my market, in fact, all of them. Um, for a while, I was mentoring people in Switzerland, and you know, they kind of learn everything they can from me, and then they take it the next step better, but the, the learning doesn't flow backwards, and so I, I didn't really see an advantage to that. Um, I would say the two biggest causes of, of stress for CSTs um, are that the candidates themselves are not serious. They come, they do it for a little while, they say, oh, this is work, this is a long voyage, uh, yeah. I'm not gonna, you know, forget this. And uh, sometimes they haven't even read the requirements for becoming a CST before they reach out to the CST and say, oh, I wanna be a, C a CST, what do I have to do? Well, you know, in the IT business, we have the concept of RTFM. <laughs> yes, so please start by making sure you know what the requirements are. And what I found to be the hardest thing is candidates who say, I wanna be a scrum trainer, but I don't know how to fill a class. You you know, whether you do it through your, um, you know, your own marketing skills, your own reputation, or whether you're working with a marketing partner, you know, that, uh, you know, getting those 100 people. It's interesting, if you can get 100 people, you can probably get 200 people. But if you can't get 10, you'll never get 100. So one of the big questions you have to ask is, you know, how do I fill a class? So, um, are you ready for CST mentoring? You know, is it, is it worth the time of a CST? Um, so what I've got here is I've written them down. This, this is what I look for, um, you know, in a potential candidate. <coughs> um, some CSTs have, um, you know, taken a more structured approach to mentoring than others. Uh, some see it more as a business relationship. Um, I'm, I'm kind of been experimenting. I, I made a community approach, which didn't work so well. Uh, now I'm now I'm trying kind of a more formal uh, more formal relationship on the mentoring. Um, what you see here, there's probably good consensus among in the CST community that if you satisfy all these things, that you're ready. Okay. Uh, notice you haven't you haven't fulfilled all the requirements to become a CST, but you're well on your way. Okay. First of all, you know you're serious. You've got commitment. Uh, you've understood the criteria. Um, you've taught a course, you have training materials. Um, you know, what I haven't mentioned here is you've got evidence that you are a, um, you know, that you have deep knowledge of Scrum and you can carry on a, you know, a conversation about the deeper whys of, of the principles of Scrum, you know, not just repeating the practices of Scrum. Um, and as I say, if you want to get co-trainings, uh, you've got to be able to organize the courses, okay? You've got to be able, that, that bar of 100 people, um, on the one hand, it's a very high bar. On the other hand, it's, it's a very low bar. Um, <clears throat> okay. Um, some suggestions while you're looking for a mentor. Uh, what you absolutely need to do is go to the Scrum gatherings. That's where you find the CSTs. Um, if you contact trainers, do not do, uh, do not do bulk mailings. Do not spam them. Uh, write to them individually. My, I, my suggestion would be for you to try to reach out to them um, you know, reach out to them privately, um, preferably at a gathering. You know, I, I've actually, one of the things I was thinking you could do is, is you know, if you want to get a trader to notice you, uh, follow them on Twitter, read their posts, comment on their posts, reply to their posts, retweet their posts. You know, you, you get, what, what you're looking for is, is a way to get to know them, you know, without pouncing on them immediately. You know, the thing to remember is, is that becoming a trainer is a long-term investment. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's an investment in time, not just money, but, but above all in time. Um, <clears throat> when you're talking to the trainer, I would make sure that you and he are clear on what the, what the bar is for getting a recommendation. 
Um, I've seen it happen where you know the, you, you get into the you get into the um, uh, start doing co trainings and the trainer says, well, yeah, almost. Just you know, organize three or four more trainings for me, and then we'll be fine. And then three or four more training. Yeah, well, you're still not quite there yet. Okay, make sure it's clear. Uh, you know, I what I do is I say I want you to co train with me and observe me once. Um, I want to do one where you're doing, you know, kind of 51%, and I want to do one where you fly the airplane the whole time. Um, one little thing which might be of interest, I've created a, a Twitter account called Scrum Trainers. This kind of automatically retweets stuff coming from the, the trainers, and it's an easy way to find out which of the trainers are active on, on Twitter. Uh, now, one thing which I would watch out for, uh, the Scrum Alliance actually says they, they do not recommend um, working with, with mentors who charge for the process. Now, there was, a, there was a CST who at the time was in the TAC and set up a mentoring program and kind of said, well, if you take my mentoring program, I'll get you through the TAC. Uh, and that was considered inappropriate. Um, <clears throat> okay, so you, know, you, you want to be, want to know what you're going to get, but you want to have fair and honest expectations. And if they're promising to get you through the process, you know, guaranteeing that you get your certification, uh, that is um, uh, highly suspicious. So what I'm going to do is put that Twitter tag, put that Twitter handle into the, into the chat. Okay. So what I'd like to do is um, let's, um, we're, we're getting down to the end. We've got about five more minutes. Um, what I would like to do is, is uh, show you how my mentoring program works. If you're interested, you can look at it on the net. Uh, before I do that, I'd like to do a call for questions. Do we have any questions out here at the moment? Going once. Uh, put it in the chat window, I think, is the best way to do it. Okay. Then what I'd like to do is I'm going to show you... Um, how my mentoring program works. Um, once upon a time, I thought I had probably the most ex um, most horrible experience of anyone trying to get you know get through the CST process. Um, I think there are people who had it easier than I did. Um, there are times when I think that uh, the process is what I went through was just kind of average. Uh, my goal in life is is to have the next generation uh, have it easier than I did. Okay, um, so what I do. Um, you know, assuming you get in, uh, what I do is we have a monthly call. Uh, we use Zoom. Uh, we have a backlog in Trello. Uh, I'm here to answer your questions. And the other thing is the other participants are there or the other, the other aspirants are there to answer your questions. Okay. And so the idea is we help each other um, get through the process of becoming a CST. Um, what I do for my mentees is I make it possible for you to attend my public CSM or CSPL classes. Um, the, there is a small fee involved to cover the, the cost of the hotel, uh, you know, the, the, the venue cost, but uh, it's, it's strictly nonprofit from my perspective. Uh, I also let you take my online personal agility course also without charge, and I give you full access to my materials. Um, what you're really getting from me, though, is my commitment to help you get ready and my commitment to recommend you as soon as you're ready. I, I try to be very clear on that, and if I'm not willing to recommend you, I don't just say, yeah, organize a couple more courses for me. Um, you know, but I give you some very clear things to work on uh, so that you can get better. Um, what I'm planning for next summer is a uh, CST and Aspirant Summit. The idea is we're going to get together. Um, I, I'm thinking what we'll do is we'll do a mock tax so we help each other prepare for that, um, uh, for that activity in the, um, uh, you know, your actual appearance, the, the oral exam in front of the, uh, uh, the acceptance committee. And the other thing that I do is I try to introduce you to other trainers you know, so that you can find possibilities to get co-training opportunities. Um, and it's very easy to find, uh, to find me, um, sat-network.ch slash CST, and that will take you to the program which explains how it works. And if it resonates with you, if it looks like it will, it will be helpful for you, um, I'd be very pleased to continue this conversation offline. So with that, I'm going to say thank you. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that link into the chat window. Um, and then I will pass the word back to uh, Socket. 
Socket, are you with us? Would you like to say yeah, some yeah. closing words or maybe facilitate the final discussion? Yes. Uh, so uh, thank you, Peter. Uh, it was it was very comprehensive uh, overview of uh, of uh, CST process. Uh, just like as somebody was asking that, can we become professional scrum trainer and certified scrum trainer uh, at the same place? So that was one query. So what I understand is that you can apply for CST if you are PST, but once you become CST, you have to leave PST. I, I would say that's a that's a fair thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, one thing, you know, of all the scrum trainer certifications, I believe the CST is the hardest to get. Um, yeah. You know, the Scrum Alliance does not recruit trainers. You apply to become a trainer. Um, yeah. So having said that, some of the, some of the lower level certifications are a bit questionable. You know, if you had a, you know, if you were a trainer for scrum.org, you know, and wanted to switch over to Scrum Alliance, I, I, I think that would be possible. Uh, you know, I, I think that would be well received. Uh, there are some other ones there where if you, um, uh, what is it? If, 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 if you have their, um, their name on your resume, that could be a bit of a problem. Okay. Okay. Uh, so that was the, 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 the one thing and, and yeah. the same thing is, is, uh, uh, um, I think valid for, uh, skill Academy. So you can't train for safe. That is what I heard in the recent global scrum gathering. When you are CST, when you mm -hmm. make a choice of becoming a, a CST, you need to leave training on safe. You can keep your SPC credentials active, but you you need to drop the idea of training people mm -hmm. on safe. So that is what 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 I I heard. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Great. So uh, I think uh, there's an there's an uh, how, how people can find more information about your mentoring program. So the the link which you shared. Okay, I put the link into the chat. That's sat-network.ch. Oh, whoa, that was the wrong one. Ah, yeah, that, ah. that looks like a personal agility link. <laughs> that was the yeah, personal agility right. link. Oh, let me try that one again. Hold on a second. Uh, it's the same website except CST as the last three letters. So let me just fix that. Uh, there we are. That should work a little better. Yes. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. So uh, uh, friends, uh, you can directly reach to Peter and, and see uh, how, how it can help you to become certified Scrum Trainer. As Peter said, and I, I keep saying to all, all the professionals that it's, it's a long journey. Uh, it's, you, you, it, there, there is no guarantee that you become a certified Scrum Trainer in a, in a two years time or, a, or a, in a one year time. But I believe the journey itself is rewarding. So in the process, it, it makes you a good trainer when you meet certified scrum trainer, when you co-train with them, your understanding of agile and scrum improves. So even if you don't reach to a designation called certified scrum trainer, but definitely you will become a better trainer. So that, yeah. that's, that's how I take it. Like uh, the journey itself has, has a good reward. Yeah. I, I, I would, si I would under sign that statement as well. Um, you know, what, what are the things that, you, that I think you learn to do is you learn to inspect and adapt on yourself. Um, and that actually starts a process of self-improvement, which takes you, I think, quite amazing places. True. That's true. been my experience. Because, yeah, yeah. Usually, once you become a trainer, you stop hearing somebody else and you start believing whatever you do is the, is the best thing you do. But once you start doing core training, you, you get somebody watching at you and advising, this was not good, this was needed improvement, mm -hmm. this you are doing good. And then, it, as, as Peter said, it brings a lot of self-introspection. Introspect, mm -hmm. And at the same time, sometimes you end up uh, uh, participating with other co-trainers. So there are, there are fellow CST aspirants and you end up learning uh, a lot. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. So thank you, friends. Thank you for joining in session today. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, do, reach to, yeah, do reach to Peter for, for the follow-up queries. Yeah, Peter, do you want to say something? Okay, yeah. I just want to say thank you, Saket. And also thank you very much to Piali for, for organizing this and um, you know, reaching out to the community. And um, I, you know, it's, it's always a pleasure to, um, you know, to have a webinar with you guys. Uh, by the way, my plan is to come to India in December. Maybe you'd like to say two words about your conference in December uh, before we jump off. Yeah, so uh, in, in December, we, we have a two days conference plan in, in Bangalore. And we are, we are thinking of various possible themes uh, which, which we will focus on. And personal agility is going to be a one theme mm -hmm. for, for that particular uh, uh, event. And uh, Peter is expected to be there. And yes. we, we yeah. are also inviting more ideas for putting up the themes in the beginning. And then we will add more speakers and, and other stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to be in Bangalore in December. And uh, I hope I get the opportunity to meet some of you then. 
Sure. Okay. So with that, once again, thank you very much, Sackett. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you to everyone for coming. Until the next time. <laughs> Bye.